guys, and welcome back to Paramount Gamer. Today, we are going to talk about my top five favorite Capcom games for the PlayStation 2. Uh, these are my personal choices, by the way, so don't be offended if uh, any of your favorites aren't on this list. Don't lose your shit. <laughs> but uh, anyways, yeah, let's uh, jump straight in here and uh, have a look at what goodness Capcom gave us for the PlayStation 2. Now, on the top of the list, number five, is an awesome game called Resident Evil Cold Veronica X. Now, Resident Evil Cold Veronica was originally a Sega Dreamcast game. It was released in 2000 and later ported to the newly Sony PlayStation 2 in 2001. While not being a number title in the series, the developers called it a true sequel to Resident Evil 2, and it was in development around the same time as Resident Evil 3, Nemesis. The game was also the first game in the Resident Evil series to move from the traditional pre-rendered backgrounds to full 3D environments. The story takes place three months after Resident Evil 3, and it lets you play as one of Resident Evil 2's protagonists, Claire Redfield. The beginning of the game sees Claire captured by the evil Umbrella Corporation, and she's brought to a mysterious Rockford Island where she's imprisoned. Upon waking up in the prison cell, Claire finds out that there's an T virus outbreak on the island, just like the Raccoon City incident. Again, like Resident Evil 2, Claire desperately fights for survival while searching for her missing brother Chris. She meets some awesome new playable characters along the way, and she fights horrible new enemies. To this day, I fucking hate those banner snatches, and this is probably the hardest game in the series, so it's definitely not for everyone. Plan ahead, reserve ammo, and try not to shit yourself at the horrors that await on Rockford Island. I love this game. An absolutely awesome game. Must play if you're owner of a PlayStation 2. It's hard as shit, but uh, yeah, check it out. It's really good. Now, number four on this list is a game called Haunting Ground. Another survival horror game, yes, but uh, let me talk about this now for a moment. Haunting Ground, also known as Demento in Japan, is a 2005 survival horror game developed and published in-house at Capcom. The game sees the player as a female protagonist, Fiona, that's recently been in a car accident and wakes up to find herself locked up in a mysterious castle dungeon. The castle of which we speak is home to some very strange inhabitants. Upon escaping her cage, Fiona tries to find a way to escape the castle while finding out more about the people that live there. She then comes across an injured dog, helps him out, and they become friends. At first, the dog doesn't really listen to your commands, but becomes more trustworthy over time. The dog can then be used to attack enemies, sniff out items, and just be a really cool companion overall. Although this game shares many similarities with Clock Tower 3, most people like to ignore Clock Tower 3 and call this game here the real spiritual successor to that series. From what I remember, this game had a really, really creepy atmosphere, left me uneasy at times, music is pretty awesome, and the graphics were some of the easily the best on the PlayStation 2 system itself. Also, here is a bit of fucking bullshit trivia for you as well. When the game was released, it received mixed reviews because of some bullshit sexual objectification of women. Oh, okay, yeah, I agree. Fiona is quite hot, and yeah, she was defenseless and weak. But you know what? At the end of the day, it made the atmosphere more terrifying. It made the game more terrifying. I don't give a fuck. The game is really good, and it made you feel for the character. Uh, it's an excellent game. Say what you will. It's a really, really good game, and it's uh, it's going up there now in price. Really check it out if you can. Now, for number three, we're going to look at a really awesome hack and slash adventure game and it's set like in a coliseum of Rome and it's called Shadow of Rome. It's very cool. Ah, the beautifully violent and highly entertaining Shadow of Rome, released in 2005 and targeted towards us, the Western audience. Capcom gave us this beautifully bloodstained hack and slash stealth gem. The plot of the game is set around the assassination of Julius Caesar, where you play as two protagonists. A centurion called Agrippa, whose outfit was accused of the assassination of Caesar, and he must face the gladiatorial trials in an attempt to save his father from being executed. The other playable character is Agrippa's friend, Octavianus, who's also Caesar's nephew. He's a stealthy character, kind of trying to find out the, who was the true killer behind the corrupt Senate. The game is exclusive to the PlayStation 2, and it runs on the enhanced Onimusha 3 engine, which is really beautiful, by the way, and runs really well. Playing the arena as Agrippa is the most entertaining parts of this game. You fight in the Colosseum against gladiators, animals, and other big bosses. You hack off their limbs, you beat them to death with their own body parts. You gain the crowd's favor by spraying your enemy's blood all over the arena. And they may even throw in an awesome weapon to kick the shit out of your enemies with. Some enemies vomit and even piss themselves. 
on screen in fear for their lives. The combat is visceral and very, very fast paced. The other parts of the game sees you playing as Octavianus, stealthily sneaking by guards, setting banana traps for people to slip on, and cracking people over the head with vases and the likes. It's fun as fuck. Although making it a number 5 in the UK game charts, Capcom didn't see the game sell too well, so they scrapped Shadow of Rome 2 and they gave us Dead Rising instead. That makes me sad. Well yeah, Shadow of Rome really kicks so much ass and I really highly recommend this. Uh, a lot of people don't talk about it, I don't know why, because it really fucking blew my balls off when I was a kid. Uh, and it still kind of does. I, I really want to do a playthrough of this one day, so if you'd like to see a playthrough of uh, Shadow of Rome, leave a comment below and, and I might just do that someday. I've been itching for, for a while. Awesome game. Now, number two. This game is absolutely awesome and I think I talked about it before, like games that made an impact on me. And uh, it's probably one of the most memorable Capcom games after Resident Evil, uh, in my opinion. And that game is Devil May Cry. Now, this is a platinum version of the game. I had the original uh, Black Label one years ago and I'm still meaning to go pick it up again. Uh, but still, I still have the game and I have the, the trilogy there. The HD trilogy is really good. Let's talk about this bitch for a moment. Devil May Cry is a hack and slash action adventure game that was released in late 2001. From the brilliant mind of Hideki Kamiya, Devil May Cry was originally intended to be part of the Resident Evil series. But the project shifted because Resident Evil boss Shinji Mikami thought it was too action packed and stylized to fit the Resident Evil universe. Kamiya rewrote the story, changed the protagonist's name and added demons into this action packed roller coaster ride of a game and now a well loved franchise by many fans all over the world. Set in a modern day, the game starts off with protagonist Dante, a badass sword wielding demon hunter with inhuman powers being visited by a woman veiled in mystery. After testing Dante she tells him she knows who the demon lord is, the demon lord who killed his mother and brother that is. On a chance for revenge he takes a trip to a fictional Malay island in search for answers. As for gameplay, it's balls to the wall action. An acrobatic protagonist with incredible swordplay mixed with guns and other weapons that you can attain later on in the game. You can juggle enemies into the air with a sword, shoot them while keeping them airborne, and you can lead a barrage of combos. You can also gain more orbs by upgrading depending on how well you master the combat. It's got a really cool as shit rating system. Although the game is not easy for newcomers, it's got a very rewarding feeling beating those bosses, especially that spider boss that continues to fuck up your day. This game also has puzzles and secret stages to complete. There's a lot of gameplay here for you guys to play. The graphics were pretty beautiful for its time, and the gameplay still is solid to this day. I love revisiting from time to time, especially the HD remaster on the Xbox 360. It's just so excellent. I can't stress how, much, how awesome Devil May Cry is. I really highly suggest it if you've never played any of the series before. Start with the first one, kind of. Second one was okay, third one was excellent, fourth one, fourth one was good. Just the second one was kind of the weakest. The, re the reboot was actually kind of okay as well. So uh, if you go check that out, uh, really, really good games. So exciting series. And now for number one, my all-time favorite game in the, the Capcom series for the PlayStation 2. That one is Onimusha. Uh, Warlords, it's called. There was also an, um, a version of it for the original Xbox called Game Onimusha, which added a couple of extra things in it. But uh, the first Onimusha is absolutely a gem. Well, let's talk about this now for a moment. How the beautiful Onimusha Warlords, originally thought up in 1997 as, yes, you guessed it, another version of Resident Evil. This time the game would be set in feudal Japan and was going to be called Sengoku Biohazard. The game elements will be the same as Resident Evil from puzzle based exploration, fixed camera angles, beautifully pre rendered backgrounds, and tank controls. Instead of guns, the player would use swords. Ninja Magic and Shuriken to take down massive hordes of demonic enemy. Loosely based off real Japanese history, the game opens up to a massive battle against Nobunaga Oda and another Japanese clan. Oda falls in battle. A year later, one of our protagonists, Samonosuke, receives a letter from his cousin, Princess Yuki, informing him about the disappearance of her servants to demons. Samonosuke and another protagonist, Kaede, arrive to find the princess has been captured as a sacrifice to the demon lord Fortinbras. Samonosuke is knocked out in battle against a powerful demon and is later awoken by a magical force called the Oni. They gift him with a magical weapon called the Oni Gauntlet that's able to trap and defeat the demons. Samonosuke sets out to rescue the princess and banish evil from the castle. It's a fucking killer story, man. I, I really dig it. Now for the gameplay. It's everything you'd expect from a Resident Evil type game set in Sengoku period Japan. 
The game features an awesome lock-on combat system where you can strafe block and hack and slash your enemy to death. Upon the enemy's death, they drop different colored orbs which you can absorb using the only gauntlet. They count as currency which allows the player to upgrade new weapons found throughout the game. Boss battles, music, pacing, everything about all the moves just rocks my balls off. Here's a fun bit of trivia for you guys. Did you know that a bug within the early version of Onimusha Warlords inspired Hideki Kamiya to create a previous title on this list? You guessed it. Devil May Cry would not came to light if it wasn't for that Onimusha bug. Hey, the more you know, eh? So yeah, there we have it. Onimusha. Highly suggest this series. Absolutely incredible. Oh man, I, I love it so much. It's such a great game. The whole series is, is, is really good. Fourth being the weakest because it doesn't feel like an Onimusha game, but it's still pretty damn enjoyable. That is my top five. I'm going to give some uh, honorable mentions before I leave this video. Leave a comment below of what your favorite Capcom games are for the PlayStation 2, and uh, I'm looking forward to reading it. As always, guys, I'll catch you next time on Power Metal Gamer. Love you. Keep the power.